Hey friends, Coach Tony back out on the water, doing some fishing, thinking about training, thinking about life, how we can be better at both of those. Already caught my first fish of the day right before I turned the camera on. Um, a little windy out here, so I was putting my anchor down. I, I tossed my lure in, took one hand off the rod to put my anchor down, and by the time my anchor was on the bottom, I had a fish on, so luckily I was able to set the hook before it got off. Very modest size, largemouth bass. But um, we still got some really healthy green grass and weeds out here that I'm punching through with a jig. This uh, body water is very close to my house and uh, most of the big bass I've caught in here have been right here in all this grass. Uh, they stocked this place with trout this week too, so potential for a multi-species day, which is fun. Just missed a bite there. So we're on the right track. We may actually see a, uh, you can see it pulled the, the soft plastic down off the jig there. So potential to actually see a fish on camera today, which would be fun. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today was the idea that there is no life-changing information. There's only life-changing action. And a lot of times as lifters, as coaches, as people involved in uh, sports performance and exercise science, we crave new information. We're always trying to learn. We're always trying to get better. And that's an awesome mindset. You know, we always want, we never want to be satisfied with our current level of, of knowledge and mastery of our craft. Um, but far too many people are searching for like that secret bit of information, that secret sauce, whether it's a, um, a training program or a mobility routine or, you know, some sort of uh, programming style or whatever. Uh, there's just, there's no such thing. And no information is going to be life changing unless you actually do something with it. And the thing is, you see so many people, I've been guilty of this myself as a coach, you know, you go to a seminar, you go to a conference, you go get the new certification, something like that. And you're like, oh my God, like that's so life changing. It's going to completely change the way that I train my athletes. Um, and the thing is, unless you're just starting out and you have like no idea what you're doing, no single bit of information, no single conference or workshop should totally change the way you're doing things. Because chances are, as long as you're abiding by the general principles of strength training, you're probably doing things just fine. You probably just need like a little bit of refinement and a little bit more experience to become more confident in your own philosophy and your own methods. And any sort of uh, new information that's presented uh, therefore should not completely change what you're doing. Uh, methods can change, methods come and go, but the principles never change. Those principles are generally progressive overload. So to make an adaptation, you gotta do a little bit more than you did before. Uh, specificity, so specific adaptation to impose demands. Basically you get what you train for. Uh, and individual differences, you know, no two lifters, no two athletes are gonna respond exactly the same to the, to a, the similar stimulus. As long as you're abiding by those things, like no new information is going to be so life changing because they're they're not really going to develop any new principles. So you have to go into any sort of new acquisition of information, workshop, seminar, DVD, whatever, uh, with like some cautious optimism, a little bit of uh, cynicism, and then on Monday morning when you go to apply those to your lifters to your own training. Uh, it shouldn't be a total revamp. It should be a slow drip, you know, because any good research study uh, tightly controls for its variables. They're not, you know, they're not changing everything in every uh, condition. They're testing two conditions against each other that are very, very similar so they can actually figure out what works. And if you are changing everything all at once, you'll never be able to say for sure, like, okay, this is what was working, or okay, like this is a drastic improvement. The conditions are too different. That's not a good, that's not a well-designed research study. So you have to be, you have to slow drip those changes. You can't change everything all at once. And I've certainly uh, been guilty of this, of you know coming in on a Monday morning after receiving new information and trying to apply it to every single lifter in every single situation. I've coached with a lot of people like that who kind of flip flop on their philosophy over and over and don't have any sort of uh, continuity in the way they, they coach things. And that's, that's never good for the lifter. That's not gonna result in the kind of progress that we're looking for. So uh, Dr. Rob Gilbert, who runs the Success Hotline, uh, he is a sports psychology professor at Montclair State University. You've probably heard me talk about him a million times. 
uh, he has a formula where he says K minus A equals zero. Knowledge minus action equals nothing. So it does not matter how much you know. It does not matter how much information you have. It matters what you do with it and when you put it into action. You know, you could be the smartest. You could have the best information. You could have access to the, the best mentors and the, and the most industry secrets, if you will. But if you're not constantly refining that information and, and testing that information in the real world, it really means nothing at all. So you got to get out there. You got to get the coaching reps in. You got to get the training reps in. Uh, and you got to test new information against the principles that we know and love that will never change. So remember, there is no life-changing information. There is only life-changing action. Be cynical, be cautiously optimistic, be a person of action. Not, don't be the smartest person in the room, be the hardest worker in the room. Be great if you could be both, but better to be the hardest worker for sure.